and i remember in the in one of the interviews i said the kabhi rossi ko bhi marenge or something like that yeah yeah, yeah. so the the first game i play against rossi after saying that i go 12 and no first kill then i drop 28 to viewer perspective i get why dm and rossi are like loved by so many people hmm. cuz their gameplay is just like a joy to view, like to joy to watch yeah. they realize that game that i might just be like the best player in the country Ladies and gentlemen, today I've got a very, very special guest with us. आज हमारे साथ एक ऐसे व्यक्ति जुड़े हुए हैं जो शायद आपको बहुत अच्छी तरह से पता होंगे. He is the one who's known for tapping heads with that prime vandal. He's also known for playing multiple different agents in probably one of the most uh, popular games in India right now. We've got Venka, aka uh, Venka itself. उनका नाम मेरे को पूरा Venkatesh. Is it Venkatesh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is Venkatesh. Venkatesh, aka Venka, who is of course right now one of the most hottest talents in Indian Valorant esports and is currently in the playoffs of VCL SA Split One Cup. On Venka, welcome, welcome. How are you feeling? Thank you for having me, man. This is an honor. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being here. So tell me, how has your day been today? How how was your day today? I mean, I I just woke up like. recently cuz i was watching the sentinels game yesterday mm-hmm. so i woke up kind of late how was the sentinels game for you are you a sen supporter yeah i am i've been a sen supporter since i started watching valorant so mm. uh i mean i'm happy they called but not the best showing from them but that's fine mm. fair enough i mean they can improve yes yeah. so uh you know talking about you uh, being a sen fan let's talk about you being a valorant fan since when did when did you actually you know stumble over valorant honestly since the game came out i remember when uh, it came out through like the twitch drops like in the beta version mm-hmm. so i saw i got to know about valorant uh, from there mm-hmm. and i honestly really like the game when it came out but i was still a uh, still playing fortnite back then so i didn't really think much of it i just played valorant like casually like with my friends you know as like a fun uh time yeah so yeah that's how i got to know about valorant and i i just like the game since it came out mm-hmm. and uh, what exactly was it about valorant that made you switch from fortnite to valorant because i remember uh, even you know medals on a kabir had told me that you were yeah, yeah. heavily invested in fortnite and trying to make something out of it yeah so actually i was i was like on the top of the fort like indian fortnite scene like i was dominating for a bit mm. but uh honestly I, it took me a long time to like actually switch to valorant like it wasn't until i reached like immortal rank till i was like okay i can actually switch when i joined my first like professional not even like professional like a first like valorant team yeah. that is when i like quit fortnite like f- proper quit mm. till then i was still playing fortnite tournaments and stuff mm. but once i like actually got a team is when i like quit mm. right Well, we can get back to Valorant. I just wanted to give a little bit of, uh, you know, a setting to the start of this podcast. But I want to tell, I want you to tell me. We know about Venka. You know, we know the guy who taps heads all around, and he is. You are a very, you know, uh, great player. But I want to know who is Venkatesh. Tell me, Venkatesh, about your early life. What was your, you know, what was your childhood like? Give me a little bit of a hint. Although you are still eighteen, okay. but <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically. I mean I'm from New Delhi and I've always like been very competitive mm. since I was like a kid I've been playing sports all my life like I was into cricket when I was like 7 yeah and I switched to football I played for like the India team for a few years oh and yeah and then covid hit so I was at home I we didn't have training mm. so I I started playing Fortnite like first it was just I used to play Fortnite like I was like you know just a fun activity with my friends right yeah. but when covid came i actually like got really good mm-hmm. so i i started placing well in like the cash cups and stuff so i i like started playing fortnite professionally from there and then covid was like the big like switch around for me like i switched from sports to esports i always wanted to be like a a footballer or a cricketer or a basketballer mm-hmm. but then covid really changed things for me like i switched to like playing like esports right mm-hmm. then yeah then i just switched to fortnite and then now we're at valorant let's see what happens next 
Okay, well that's good. Uh, can you tell me about the first ever experience you had with gaming? I mean, you were born in an era where, of course, you know, gaming had already come at least quite a distance, yeah, yeah, yeah. and by the time you grew up, it became it was already a solid thing. So, what was your first ever experience with gaming? So the so first, I, I was like six or seven, and we had like a PS3, I think, and I was just grinding FIFA. Like I was really into FIFA, mm-hmm. but the first ever game like I ever ever played. Was probably like Call of Duty Ghosts with my cousin brother. Okay. So I went over to his place. He had an uh, Xbox 360, mm-hmm. and he had caught Ghosts on it. And I had no idea what it was. And I was like, "Damn, this looks so much fun!" Mm-hmm. It, and the first time I like played it, I was like, "I love this. Like, this is, I want like a, a console, and I want to play video games, right?" So then I convinced my parents to like get me a console, mm-hmm. and I started playing FIFA. I started playing Call of Duty Ghosts. And I I was a big like I was like eight and I was like a big rager like <laughs> I used to play FIFA 15 I used to rage a lot like stuff that was like a fun time as well but mm-hmm. I I got I got a when when I got a PS4 I got uh, Black Ops 3 mm-hmm. and that's the first game I like really like was good at like I was try hard and like I was like a prestige master like one of the youngest oh. I think yeah so yeah that was fun I was just playing with my brother and stuff. That that was like my first like proper gaming experience, I think. Mm. So God. you clearly already have a like you did you know that already that you know you were a gaming prodigy because clearly you every game you've touched, although you've told me about three different games right now, you've already been at the top of them. So did you know that you you know you've got something in this industry? I I think I was too young to recognize like. When I was playing Call of Black Ops Three, I was Prestige Master. I saw so many Prestige Masters, right? I mm. didn't know that uh, there's no one like as young as me. There probably still like are people who were Prestige Masters when they're like eleven or ten, but I didn't really think much of it. But when I like uh, started playing Fortnite and I got really good at it, I was like, maybe, mm. like, maybe I have it in me. But I think it wasn't until like. This like recent time in Valorant, and I was like, okay, maybe like I can be one of the best uh, this country's ever produced. Mm-hmm. So you you have that you know about what your potential is then. I mean, everyone should believe in themselves like that they can you know be the best in okay. not just India like in the entire region. So, mm-hmm. but I'm positive that I can you know be the best. Yeah, right, that's good to hear. Okay, so I wanted to ask you. So you uh, came into Valorant through Fortnite, correct? But you yeah. did you ever have a stint with CS:GO? As you know, uh, because a lot of people right now who are playing Valorant have come into that as their first FPS game. But you came in through playing Call of Duty, then you played Fortnite. I didn't hear a CS:GO. Was there ever a time where you had CS:GO? In your I was life? actually a never a time where I played CS:GO. I didn't touch that game until I started playing Valorant. Like it was I. I got to like playing CS through Valorant. Okay. Yeah, but honestly, even if I try, I knew about CS of course because it's like one of the biggest games, right? Mm-hmm. So I got to I knew about CS, but even if I like watched or played it like while too slow paced, like going from Fortnite to CS Go, mm-hmm. it's like a big switch. Like Fortnite is one of the fastest games there's ever been created, right? Yeah. And CS. Just felt very dull and like slow mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from Fortnite. But now, like when I play now, now that I'm playing Valorant, CS seems like a fun game. So, so I might still like play CS with my friends like for fun. But I never played CS Go when I was like you know before I played Valorant basically. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's more or less about the game. I think we can catch up with the present in a bit. But I do want to ask you about you know. Uh, how your journey's been outside of the game, beside the PC, when you're away from keyboard? Um, talk to me a little bit about your family. How has your life been with your family, like you know, uh, throughout your entire life so far? Honestly, it's been amazing. Like my parents are very supportive. Like on like when I started off, like Fortnite and stuff. Obviously, you're like a 13, 14 year old kid. Your parents won't let you just play games forever, right? Mm-hmm. And also, when you're 13, 14, you don't have like that self-realization that, oh, I need to study, oh, I need to like do something else. But I think recently, since I got like professional in Valorant, like since I got like 16, 17, my parents have like, you know, found that right balance, and I found that right balance between my studies and my social life and like Valorant. 
so like they just want me to like be like good at studies mm-hmm. as well as play valorant so i just need to get good grades study for like a good amount of time mm-hmm. and just play valorant <laughs> they don't mind but i think one thing i have to sacrifice on is my social life mm-hmm. cuz when i was in when i was like casually playing valorant like when i was in chill court and stuff i would like not have practice for like long hours and stuff yeah so i would go out with my friends do all the high school shit mm-hmm. but i can't do that anymore cuz i have practice mm-hmm. i mean i still can but it's obviously reduced so i think that's the big sacrifice i have to make or anyone who's trying to go pro at my age has to make your social life will get affected cuz you're basically you basically have a job yeah yeah that's more or less it is a, it is actually a job that you are uh, you know having to at least like yeah, there's a responsibility of course especially when you are playing at your level you know when you're almost you know a couple of steps away from uh, qualifying to an international level it is yeah. quite the task but uh talking about your parents itself i wanted to know how was their first reaction like you know you said they were supportive but you know we all know that you know there is this taboo of esports in india like you know my parents i went through it a lot of parents have you know been a little reserved about it but of course as time is going on they are getting a little bit more you know open to the fact okay you know what esports is a prospective thing so how were your parents the first time you told them that you wanted to go professional in a game oh uh, i think the first time like i got my fortnite winnings like when I, i placed in like a fortnite tournament i told them that i won like 800 dollars or something or 400 dollars and they were like wait really like you got 400 dollars from like playing a game <laughs> but my parents told me one thing like since i was like a kid like when i started playing for, like when i started making money from fortnite they, the first thing they told me was don't do it for the money like play the game for the actual game mm-hmm. like it's a video game at the end of the day have fun don't like be inspired by the money aspect of it mm-hmm. cuz my parents never told me to like worry about money or anything mm-hmm. so that's where they were like really supportive ki like don't focus on the money just focus on like play the game for the game right and also uh when i like started uh valorant mm-hmm. and like i started going for like the lands and stuff when i went to mumbai and then i played the VCL like the first season yeah. so that was all on land right yeah that's when my parents really thought oh like this is a big deal because they saw me on youtube they saw yeah. me on like people making reels about me and stuff so they were like me damn this is like actually something big mm-hmm. so they were, they were, they they're really proud of me but i think in the back of our heads all of us know like even i know and my parents know that this is not like my full time career option this is not something i want to do for the rest of my life mm. like at this stage i can't be that committed yeah i have to like have a backup plan i'm still like you know uh, trying to build up my cv for uni i'm doing the normal high school stuff but i'm playing professional valorant as well mm. so uh, as unless i'm doing that i think they're going to they're always going to be there for me even even if i don't i think they're going to be there for me but they want me to like you know go to uni get my degree yeah at least do all of that stuff and like have a backup that's mm-hmm. all they want because i'm too young to just commit to like being valent professional okay. like so yeah that's it i mean yeah i mean that is a thing you know uh, you know whenever i listen to something like this it reminds me of uh, the scale rahul interview i don't know if you've seen it but um, you know he's talking to a new supporter and they ask him are your parents happy that you know you've played for india you've won trophies you know you you earn in crores and then he so he is a college dropout right he didn't finish his mm-hmm. university so even today his parents apparently tell him that please go to university finish your degree and get a job after you finish cricket because even though he's played for his country gone all the way there it's it's always that you know it's a mentality that you know even when no matter how far you've gotten indian parents and basically i think parents everywhere just want you to you know complete your education have a good backup no matter what even yeah. if you're earning crores of rupees you never know what's going to happen tomorrow you might lose it all so that is yeah, i'm true. yeah that, that is a good thing and i'm really uh, glad that you've got you know such supportive parents but uh, there's always 
uh, you know, about life. There, when there is the good, there is the bad as well. And I wanted to ask you: Have there ever been any times in your life so far where you felt like, you know, what? It's been a very, very tough time. Something related to gaming or you know, family in general, where you you feel like you've had to quit or you might have to stop gaming. Anything? Something that might have been emotionally taxing for you? I think, uh, honestly, I haven't had like such an experience, but. It's usually when I have like boards or something when I like have to quit gaming or like take a break. Mm. But I think one of the lowest points was probably when like I grinded for a year of playing for Chilcot, right? Mm-hmm. And we were like owning the T2 scene. Yeah. Like everyone knew about us and all the T1 teams knew. Mm. But like no one wanted to take me because I couldn't go to boot camp, right? Yeah. So I was just like, I think I got I got an offer from VLT in like October. Oh, okay. Like I think October 2022, mm-hmm. and they didn't they didn't take me because I couldn't go to boot camp. I got so many offers from so many teams, but I couldn't join because I couldn't go to boot camp. Right. Mm-hmm. So for a bit, I was like, what's the point of like grinding anymore? Like, I can own the T2 scene, but I'll never get the chance to play in the T1 scene because no one's gonna take me because I can't go to boot camp. Yeah. So I was just so that's when I like took like a a, a long break i think in between when i was like uh i don't think this is worth it I th- and i think i put out a tweet as well that i'm gonna quit competitive valorant i right? remember that yeah i remember that yeah but i think then all of all of the people around me and all the people in the scene were like I, I don't think you should quit like you'll get your chance i didn't believe them at first but then i was like okay like, I, I can't just you know let all my hard work go to waste so i, I was like okay i'll just i'll just play ranked <laughs> <laughs> well that's got me pretty far and I, I i must say that you know um uh, talking about your uh, chill cord uh, stint itself uh, you guys like you said you guys were owning the t2c and you guys went pretty far ahead in terms of beating a lot of teams that people were not expecting you to beat right so you realize that at that point a lot of people were getting attracted to supporting you guys or you guys as players just because of the way you guys played like wh- back then did you know about like you know the way you would grow even as let's say a personality or as a, or as a you know a player or were you just like you know what nah i just want to play 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 i don't want to build my profile or something like that yeah i didn't i don't think we thought about all of that honestly we were just like playing the game we we had a very unique play style especially in the indian scene because mm. we were we played under ca for a long time right yeah so we were like playing yoru and neon on fracture mm. playing yoru on bind you know playing all like the i think the comps that people play now like rena dreze and stuff so i think we had like a very fast paced like entertaining game style and people mm. liked watching us yeah so i think that's what like attracted people to like our game style and us as players like we're like really flashy and stuff getting all the clips techno saw on me like it was it went crazy it was honestly the best time i've ever had yeah that is actually something that i wanted to ask you about as well like you know all of you right now the players who are there in chill court like you know how did you guys come together like what exactly how did you find you five like what was that Okay so basically we all of us used to play Mumbai ranked right mm-hmm. and Mumbai ranked is looked upon as like a very niche thing like bro tu Mumbai ranked khelta hai tu kitna loser hai <laughs> and stuff but all of us met through Mumbai ranked and th- there was this chill court like there was a discord server literally called chill court right mm-hmm. chill court like court is like a disc- yeah. short version for a discord server so it was a discord server called chill court and i got invited all the mumbai servers players on it like most of them like the good ones so i got invited to it and i met uh son satan and i don't know if you remember him there was a player called simple yeah i do yeah so I, i i met him and i met uh uh inflix and all of those guys mm-hmm. and first i played for a like a team called atlantis esports this is back in the day like mm-hmm. before chill court as well So I played there for a bit, and we beat ROG, where Sai was playing. Mm-hmm. We beat, and uh, Satan and on already had a team, and they saw me like, and they were like, "Oh damn, this is good." So I started playing with Satan, Son, and uh, I think it was Markavelli at mm-hmm. that time, and Shlokzi. 
Slokes he doesn't really play anymore, but he was also like a good player back like back then. Mm-hmm. So we created like a chill court team, and then uh, there was Khel Tuzad as well for a bit. We got Khel Tuzad in, yeah. and then we replaced Khel Tuzad with Techno, because mm. Techno was in the silver as well, and he was really good friends with Glyph. Okay. So we got Techno in, and honestly, since we got Techno in, that five of me, Satan, Son, Techno, and Glyph, we played together for a long time, like. Even though, like, we had no objective in Prague, like mm. people have like, okay, we're gonna practice this today, this map, this com and stuff. Yeah. Our practice was literally like ranked. You're playing ranked in a scrim. That's how we used to practice, and that's how we like basically met each other. And that, honestly, I think I'm still grateful to like say, like you know, getting me in my first team because I think the. Hardest thing for like a new player is to like find that first team. Mm. Like everyone asks me, how do you get into the pro scene? How do you like, you know, get into professional Valorant? And I always tell them, you need to make like a team of like friends and stuff first, like an orgless team. No one, no orgs gonna pick you up yeah. straight away unless you're like rank one or something. Yeah. So I think that that was the hardest. The hardest thing became like very easy for me when I found Son and stuff. Hmm. And honestly, any opportunity I get to play with Son and Techno again, I'll take it. I mean, it was pretty evident that you guys were pretty good friends. Uh, you know, res- uh, despite the fact that you were, of course, just you know, uh, playing ranked or playing uh, professionally as teammates. Um, and now, uh, all three of you are you know part of your own teams in Tier One. You've come up. Like, yeah. did you uh, did you see that happening back then when you guys were playing Chill Like, you know, True Rippers as Techno. He's one of the core players. Your core, your core of Grey Fox. Son is there in uh, OG now. Honestly, with Techno for sure, all of us knew that he's gonna make it because like he's very hardworking and dedicated, and he's insanely talented as well. And he, he always would work on his game. Like, even if we told him something, he's gonna work on it. Like, he's one of the most hardworking people I know. So, all of us knew for a fact that this guy's gonna make T1 like mm-hmm. eventually or be one of the best in the region, which he is. So, for Techno, we knew for sure. For Son. I mean, he's he's like really into studies. He's he's got into Boston University. Oh, he's like he's like doing his assignments always. He's do, he's oh, he's a very smart kid basically. Mm. So all of us thought he's gonna you know he quit Valorant you know uh just study and stuff. But I think he pulled through as well. Like he's doing really well. He's man. He's also managing uh with school and stuff. Techno mm. is in college now, but Son is still in school. So. Son and I think they were doubtful about me and Son, but we would know knew for sure about Techno. Hmm. Uh, speaking about uh, the same set of like you know uh, I would say dynamic, you have friends in game. What about your social? I know you said you your social life you had to sacrifice, but what about your friends who like you know watch you play on the professional scene and they're like oh my dude like what is their reaction the first time they realized wait what Venkas playing on tier one what like what was that like? Honestly, they they don't care, and I'm really happy they don't. I'm really happy they don't. Do they play Valorant? They play Valorant. They like silver and stuff. But I'm really okay. happy they don't care that I'm playing T1 and stuff, and they don't know about it, because like th- they don't know about like the scene and stuff. Mm. So, so I'm happy because then I get like a break from like my gaming and stuff. Mm. So like when I'm playing Valorant professionally, it is, it is like kind of tiring and exhausting, right? So when I go to like my IRLs, I know I'm gonna have a good time, and they won't ask me about like, oh, like how's Valorant and stuff, yeah, and like please boost me or something, because <laughs> I I know people like that. So I like to stay away from that. Like when I'm chilling with my friends, I want it to be purely like, because I want to live my high school life as well, right? Mm-hmm. I just don't want to like miss out on my high school life. So I'm yeah. happy that it's like a complete disconnect. We just talk about sports, how Chelsea is a really bad team and stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess after losing the Carabao Cup final, you can't really say much to a bunch of Liverpool teenagers. But hey, it's okay. Enough about Chelsea. I'm an Arsenal fan, bro. No, I'm not a Liverpool yeah, teenager. Okay. okay. Let, no, no. I'm just saying in Chelsea. But Arsenal also is not like they have done anything. But, <laughs> uh, recently, okay. Okay, no, no. It's okay. Uh, okay, so coming to um, okay, is friends we spoke about. Uh, does, is there anybody special in Venkas like that we should know about? Uh, do you have any? Uh, nah, nah, no time nah, for girls. Bro. No, I mean, I or guys, I we don't judge here. No, the girls don't have time for me, man. <laughs> girls don't have time for you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, fair enough. But is there anybody like you know? Have you seen girls like have they come to you like oh my god, you play so cute, man? Like anybody 
ever tried oh, that any bro i i don't think the crowd i like i am around they don't give, they don't give a shit about what about knowledge. online what about online has like after online? finding you out like you know oh my god venka have any girls like you know slid into your dms or stuff like that no nah, i'm under age man i think half of the people just don't care <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, I, I want to ask you about uh, like you know. So you started on like you said, Atlantis Esports, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you came to Chill Court. So across that entire period, you were also in MLT last season. Uh, what so far has been the best moment of your career? What's been the highlight of your career so far? That Icebox game versus RNT, maybe. Mm. Even though we lost the series, I think that game really like I really realized that game that I might just be like the best player in the country. <laughs> that if my some people might call that game like a fluke or something mm. but that's how like i expect myself to play that's how my teammates know me like know how i play that's how i usually play mm. but it's just hard to like transfer that into matches cuz obviously if i could do that then i would do be it the every best game, yeah yeah but i think that game would be the highlight of my career especially cuz that was my first time playing against rossi mm-hmm. and I I've never played against G before when he was in G when I was in Chill Court never played against him then when I was in MLT he went to franchising so I never played against him there yeah. I've been watching him since I started playing Valorant right mm. so I've been a fan of him like when I started playing Valorant and I remember in the in one of the interviews I said kabhi Rossi ko bhi maarenge or something like that yeah yeah so the the first game I play against Rossi after saying that I go 12 and 0 first kill then I drop 28 and we win the map yeah. even though we lost this series I I really wanted to win that series I wish I could have played the first map but that ice box was I think is my highlight is the highlight of my career cuz I haven't done anything else honestly <laughs> to like make the highlight of my career I mean it's not a bad highlight you know having to say that you went 28 and uh, 28 you dropped 28 with 12 plus bloods against a team like Revenant who've got pro- some you know honestly region beaters in that severin uh, you know those kind of course the new guy and Ro- yeah. and rossi uh, and speaking about these people um, you entered valorant you started playing but who were your idols like rossi one like, clearly is a scene but who were the people that you got inspired by to you know uh, play i think in the Indi- like in if they're not in the indian scene it was tens i'm a really big tens fan boy mm-hmm. but if you're talking purely in like the indian scene it was probably like dm and rossi mm-hmm. cuz i just loved how they play like the flashiness i just was inspired by that and also i didn't know them how how they act like behind the scenes or how they are in like a team environment but solely from like a viewer perspective i get why dm and rossi are like loved by so many people mm. cuz their gameplay is just like a joy to view, like a joy to watch yeah so i was inspired by i think dm and rossi okay and have you met them so far i think you've met dm yeah i've i've met i've met rossi as well okay. i've met rossi but it was like a very like small interaction it was like i i met him like as a fan <laughs> i met him when he played the show match mm-hmm. but there were so many people there to meet him i literally was there to get a photo with him like i was in line <laughs> in queue with other people to get a photo with rossi but mm-hmm. dm i have like chilled with and stuff like dm i know he's like a good friend now so how was that transition from being uh, an idol to becoming a friend what was that experience for you Honestly you get to know that these guys are like normal people and it's thought like I was like idolizing idolizing them I just really was inspired by them so when I like you know got to know like even Vibhor for example mm-hmm. I think the first time I was like actually like starstruck by like a Val Pro was Vibhor <laughs> and like Vibhor is like one of my best friends now so it's crazy to say that but when I was I I, I met Vibhor through like Shivy and all I used to play mm-hmm. five stack with them and bro The first time I played five stack with Vibhor, I was so scared. <laughs> like this is like the real Vibhor. Need to impress him, man. Eh? Yeah, and Vibhor doesn't know this, <laughs> so I'm like exposing myself. He's probably gonna make fun of me about this, but uh. but after Vibhor, I I think when I met like DM, I haven't still like talked to Rossi properly. Mm. Like, I'm good friends with Skills, and I look I used to look up to Skills as well, like all of the G and VLT team, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm good friends with Skill Skills now. So I think. I am past that point where I'm like, you know, starstruck. They're like good friends now. Mm. So I think, yeah, they're really nice people, and I'm really happy that I know them. <laughs> well, now you are going to be facing off these people on land, both of them, and yeah, you true. have qualified. Who are you hoping that you would face off on land? Because I think this is going to be your first time against Rossi on land. 
I mean, it depends if the if they beat TR, and that's not a very easy game for RNT, I think. Mm-hmm. But if we get to the finals, or when we get to the finals, I don't know. Uh, I wanna. It's like a very like confusing situation because on one side you have Rossi, right, and RNT, the clear favorites. Like they didn't lose a single game. Yeah. On the other side, you have Techno <laughs> and TR. So I I have no idea. I I honestly. I just want to win, bro. Just give me the worst team, man. I'll take it. I don't know what the, <laughs> what's the worst team is. Just I just want to win. I don't care who I play. Hmm. Well, fair enough. I guess uh, it's all about that. I I think it was you. I think you're the one who you start. I, you were the one who started putting it up on Twitter. I guess the, the nah I'd win. No, that wasn't me, bro. That mm-hmm. it was. I think it was the uh, Izu T1 Izu, Izu before the. No, no, not not. I mean, in our region, I think it was somebody. I don't remember who it was putting it up on Twitter recently. While the VCLSS season was going on, I don't, for some reason I thought it was you, as I remembered you. But then I remember you also, you know, was it somebody else? Anyway, uh, I don't post anything before the game. I'll <laughs> tell you that because like I'm, I, I, I think I jinx myself or something. But Kabir Kohli actually DM me on Discord. I'm exposing you, Kabir. Yeah, let's you go. You DM me on Discord. He sent me that image. Now nah, Edwin, and he's like. Mm-hmm. Can you please tweet it out before the medal game? <laughs> <laughs> like no, bro. Oh wow. Okay. I mean, uh, if you come to that side of you, I think you have a bit of a banter side of you in you, right? Because after yeah, the, I after the, I remember you, your infamous L pose on stream. Um, <laughs> yeah, talk us a little through that. You know, what what was what's that part of Venka like? Honestly, all of my friends, all I think most of the people in the community think I'm really toxic and stuff. <laughs> Honestly, I am a little bit toxic, but like that game in specific, I got really tilted because I got knifed, mm. and that's very normal. And or I don't have a problem with getting knifed. It's not like if you knife me, my ego is gonna get hurt. Mm. But it was that he didn't need to knife me. Like if you don't need to knife me, don't knife me. Mm. Fair enough. Is so that... I was kind of tilted because of that, and mm. also. They are the reigning champions. They did dominate the entire scene for a year, right? Yeah. And they've had all the fun. They've beaten every single team. So I was like, I'll just throw up the L. Like, that's <laughs> it. Fair enough. So, if there's anybody that you love bantering with, who is it right now? In oh, this techno, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I remember. No I remember we were on on. I think you were. We were on my Discord, and uh, you mentioned that you know it's time for Techno's toxic side to come out now. Yeah. Oh so, no, it will come out for sure, and he has a toxic side. Let me tell you that. <laughs> you all of you guys see the Jay Shri Krishna, the GG's well played. Love you all. <laughs> love the other team. Techno is not like that, guys. Techno deep down is very toxic. Like, okay, I'm gonna expose him as well when he's playing against like like professional players who've been playing for a long time. <laughs> In game, like his comms are gonna be like budhe picker, like you <laughs> old and stuff. Techno is like that. I don't do that. Techno <laughs> is the real like toxic cocky person. Wow. Okay. This is new information. Budhe picker. Okay. I think Ch- if Techno, if Techno is watching this, like you know what I'm talking about. Techno. I'm going to against... personally send this to him to make sure. Yeah, bro. We were in Chelkhod. We played RG. That was like a big like breakthrough game. We beat RG two one and three one in like a tournament. Mm-hmm. And RG was like a T one team back then. Yeah, Techno was on one that series, bro. He was like, "Budde picker, ye budda, wo budda." He that's where he got that confidence from. But he's very toxic. Let me wow. tell you that. Wow, that is uh, quite the revelation here. Well, that's fun. Uh, let's come back to the game itself now. Uh, now, of course, you're playing in Grey Fox. Um, yeah. Compared to last year's uh, season, what's changed this year in you personally? What's Venka different from? MLT 2023 Venka to Grey Fox 2024. I think I'm just more disciplined and I'm obviously a better player. Like I've worked hard the entire year after MLT, so I think I'm just. I think God, the God Speeds really helped me with like my discipline and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm also thankful to like Hoax for like you know giving me this opportunity because I played an MIBS with him, Made in Bharat, for like yeah. one off season event, and that's how I uh, he recommended me to God Speed for Grey Fox. Mm-hmm. Initially, Godspeed didn't want to take me. Like he was like he can't come to boot camp. Like the same thing yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but like Hoax and Vibhor, they somehow convinced him to like at least give me a shot. Mm. And when I start, when I joined Grey Fox, I think that's when I was still like, you know, not a perf, not the perfect player. I still am not like a perfect player, mm. but I'm definitely closer to being 
the best version of myself and i think god speed is like really helped me with that and my teammates of course mm. but i think i'm st- i still have that flashiness but i know when to stop mm-hmm. and that's something which a lot of young players struggle with i struggled with for like an entire year basically in mlt like you when you're young and you know and in your head you think your your aim is better than everyone which it might as well be but valorant doesn't work like that you can't just you know play on autopilot yeah you can't you can't just if you get a kill you swing for another one you if you get the second you swing for the third mm. that's how the ranked and the young mentality was that's how our mentality in chill court was mm-hmm. that's how i've play played valorant my entire life just like if you get a kill you have to go for the second if you get a second you have to go for the third so i think that's what like i stopped doing like i know when to stop i know when to like go crazy as well mm-hmm. that flick i think unlocking that is the biggest thing for me mm-hmm. so i think that's the main difference and the main difference is i'm winning so like i'm happier obviously i'm more motivated because mm-hmm. if you're going to like lose all your games you're obviously going to lose motivation but this this year so far i think we played like really well so yeah i'm motivated my teams i love my team i i like i love my coach so i think everything's going well yeah that's great that to hear um speaking of uh, competition itself like you know your team's been great who so far has been your biggest competitor like who's you know who's the one person that you know you have always you know i would say not struggled to face off against but you've always felt a little bit like you know icky bro i think it has to be son or techno son man techno again. <laughs> son or techno again cuz the thing is whenever i'm playing against son or techno i i i struggle because in my head okay in specific like son and techno like if i know the son and techno are like going to aim fight me they know what i'm going to do i know mm. for a fact and i know what they're going to do as well so that when i like double mind myself that's when i like struggle mm. but i don't think there's any other like pro which i would like you know i like right now like struggle against or be be like like double mind double think or like double be like double minded but in It's just techno and son because they know what I'm gonna do and I know what they're gonna do because we know each other so well. Mm. So, so I just get and I've played with them for so many years. If you're gonna play against someone who you played with for so many years, you're obviously gonna have like that thing in your head. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, players is the conversation that I do want to you know take on as now we head into a little bit of a section where I want to talk about you know what's prospectus, what the you know fans are saying and what exactly is going to be. Uh, your opinion about a couple of things number one thing who is your top 5 players in india right now my top 5 mm. okay i'll where is golu included in this sure you can include golu yeah okay so i'll go with golu i'll go with rossi mm-hmm. go with techno okay can i include myself sure yeah, of course you can okay i'll include i'll include myself and i'll go with the uh, hmm I'll go with Hoax. Hoax or Hoax or uh, I think uh, uh, Raw Fuel. Hoax or Raw Fuel. All right. One okay. of them. That's 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 nice. I like that. I like that list. Um and speaking about actually I wanted to talk to you about before we get to the next section I wanted to talk to you about Hoax itself. You mentioned that he, you know, uh, was the one who recommended uh, you but uh, he himself has been a very underrated player at least in my opinion. Yeah, right? for sure. A lot of people don't really know Hoax. Uh, they only know him as the guy, you know, when you know his photo comes up in the player screen. He's, you know, he's got the big muscles, you know, he's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, buffed up guy. But how has he been? Because I, I believe he's been one. Of, he's one of the leaders at Grey Fox as well. Yeah, he is. He so, is. Because uh, I know, is does Adrian King IGL or does Hoax IGL? Adrian IGL, but Hoax is like the team captain. Cap. So how has his influence been since coming to Grey Fox? Dude, Hoax is like, he's also like, I really, I really like people who work hard. and that's what hoax and techno show a lot hoax is also like very hard working like never late for practice never slacking off in scrims none of that mm-hmm. he's like he wants to win like he's one of those guys and he's very calm like mm-hmm. he he rages sometimes but it's like a friendly rage like mm-hmm. he'll never like you know get tilted or stuff at his teammates especially so i think hoax that way is really good and people don't see his impact like on the start line yeah people think oh hoax is definitely the worst player on grey fox this is that hoax is arguably the best player on grey fox right now because of the impact he has like 
if you guys notice he's the one who's always planting he's the one who's always he's the insurance basically for our team mm. if everything goes wrong like hoax is there yeah so and the thing is hoax doesn't need to like really do much like kill a lot of people cuz me and see would you know take care of that mostly yeah. or goli and aiden so ho- like you don't really see the impact of hoax like on the stat line but i think everyone who's played with hoax can agree that he's like without the kills even without the kills he does get kills like he's he's he has really good aim and stuff but without the kills he's still one of the best players on the team just because of how he never makes mistakes how he's always like you know there for the team insurance everything mm. listens to the coach he's working hard wants to win so i think hoax is honestly very underrated still even though we're like with second in the league we're playing the playoffs i still think hoax is like very underrated no i i agree as well i think hoax does have you know this is something because he doesn't have that much of a social profile he doesn't yeah, you know he doesn't. put himself out there as much as other players but yeah um now coming to you particularly venka i think this is something that you would have also heard you would have seen multiple times online people okay first of all i am pretty sure people love you okay it's very evident that you know people love mr venkatesh who plays for grey fox but i want to ask you um have you seen the people who keep shouting your name out to be pushed to global esports for franchise yeah i do see that but honestly i don't think i'm ready yet like i still need time in like the t1 scene i cuz the first experience i got was in mlt and i was just losing mm-hmm. so first i want to establish myself as like the best in the country like i think after this vcl my goal for 2025 is to play for ge mm. that's i think that's everyone's goal yeah in india right cuz the chance of us getting picked up by any other franchise team is very slim yeah. and the only other chance i have at playing franchises is by winning ascension which True. is which is going to be hard I yeah. think we can do it but it's going to be hard. Mm. So I I'm obviously looking towards G but I don't think I'm ready yet. I still need more time. Mm. In like the T1 scene. But I'm pretty sure after this like this BCL season passes by, I think I should be ready. And I and I want to prove myself to G that I'm good enough cuz people shouting my name out won't make them take me. Like Fair. it's not a joke. Like it's franchise you're like among like the best like 80 90 100 players in the entire world yeah so i still need to like prove myself in like the indian scene then how does it make you feel though like you know there's so many people who tell g you should you know they they tag g almost every other day you know when they, they like pick up venka pick up venka and it's you know you're amongst that very few list of players where people are always like this guy should be on ge asap period like how does that make you feel honestly it's a great feeling cuz that it means that people think you're franchise level basically yeah e- even though i don't think i'm franchise level yet seeing that people think that gives me motivation that maybe i am franchise level and or even if i'm not people want me to like play for g so i need to work harder mm-hmm. so i think that's really like nice to see that people think i'm i can play for g mm. so it really motivates me and like i like it obviously who wouldn't want to be like <laughs> you know who wouldn't want to be connected to the one yeah yeah fair so uh that is one side of the thing of course you know where people give you love but have you ever had any interaction of haters or you know i, I mean i'm pretty sure there must be some but have there people who you know have been coming and telling you you know stuff for so when you perform maybe not so good i mean you i knew that i was going to get haters once i get a lot of support is <laughs> right there's always like some haters mm. but i've been playing i think the experience i got in from fortnite really helped me cuz i had haters in fortnite as well cuz mm. i was on the top at the top of the scene yeah. so i had haters back then as well so i think i know how to like deal with hate i don't think i'm the best at it honestly but i think i don't really get that much hate yet mm. don't give me hate please <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think uh, it's, not, it's it hasn't been that bad. I think it I think it's yeah I think it purely relates to the fact that you've actually been probably more consistent than any Indian player we've seen so far, you know, especially in the role that you play because you know there's always a cry there's always a shout for, you know, uh duelists in our region sometimes not being good enough, especially you know when they saw uh, Rossi in at tier 1 where he performed really good against a couple of 
teams in some maps but then instantly the next time the next map he you know uh, had a couple of down downward performances so it's a little up and down thing but you i think have been probably a lot more consistent and considering that itself um how important is it <clears throat> excuse me how important is it for you that you know um uh, in game do you prefer to have your like you know do, do you prefer to being you as the key or like the spirit for the team or do you like being more of a you know a cog wheel in the works of the team honestly i'm i'm playing both roles like i'm i i play the duelist on some maps i'm playing killjoy on some map when i'm playing killjoy i'm just following what the team's doing right mm-hmm. i'm like usually watching flank and stuff staying yeah. behind and stuff but when i'm playing jet like on ascent or something i'm the one i'm the main key like as you said like the key player who like you know creates the space and stuff yeah so i'm playing both roles and i, I don't have a personal like preference honestly i can play both ways i can be the the person who's getting the first kills i can be like the supportive player like who's playing for the team mm-hmm. i don't mind any but it's obviously i think it's easier to be like the support of the team because you don't have to do much especially when you have duelists like see you in the team where he's just going and killing people you have, there is usually like a 5v3 when the round starts so <laughs> it's fun when you're the support but having that responsibility of getting that first kill and being the key player has this different like feeling to it you know mm-hmm. like you when you win them the when when you win the team the rounds you you can literally change the game you, it's in your hands you can yeah. change change the entire flow of the game so i think having that in your hand is a big thing and it's also fun hmm. so if you had to like you know um i would say choose one particular instance of this last year that you would change like you know something that you feel like you know would have would have probably made your life better or you know you would have wanted to change what would it be in your professional career i don't know honestly i think i've made pretty good decisions so far that's like good. there hasn't been like a bad decision cuz when i i did join medal as a sixth man right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but i when i was the sixth man there i did utilize my time i i ended that act like that act like 82nd on the leaderboard mm-hmm. so i think when i'm not like playing professionally i'm trying to like do something else like you know grind rank and stuff yeah but i wouldn't say i wouldn't even say joining medal as a sixth was a regret like i mm. it wasn't bad like it w- i had a good time like i was playing ranked i did fill in like for them for a few scrims i did like want to play in the playing five for, like towards the end when they were like losing and so i was like give me be like give me a shot mm-hmm. but by the time i like left the team already and i was playing with the uh, made in bharat like hoax and before yeah. shooter and the uh, rvk so Yeah, I don't think I've had any regrets. Maybe the uh, one regret I have is like not streaming enough. Mm. But you are starting to do that now, I believe. Yeah, I I I will start to do that cuz I think if I like stream, I will have a I didn't know that back then, but now after like I recently streamed, I was like, "Damn, like people are actually like watching me play." Yeah. So, I think I need to like get good at like the streaming the side of it, mm. like the content creation. so i mean that is a thing that you know that comes as a you know prerequisite to players now before you were just players but now you're also an image you know you know need you need to help not just yourself but also your org in different ways so yeah. uh, coming to that it's of the org itself gray fox esports currently you are in the playoffs you are looking to you know uh, you are amongst i would say i would say you're clearly uh, i think the next two uh true rippers and revenant you i you guys are the favorites just because of how you know uh, clean valorant you guys play right so yeah. what is apart from winning what's your personal goal for this year with gray fox i don't think there's any other goal apart It's from winning. winning okay fair yeah. enough fair enough no i i meant to ask it in a way that you know do you guys like you know uh one like ascension of course is something that is going to be yeah. a little difficult to get to because of course revenant uh, even though they lose a map they end up somehow picking up the series so uh, what i meant by personal goal was when you get to ascension if you do get to ascension mm-hmm. what does that look like for you i'm pretty sure you would have seen other sea teams and stuff like that so yeah i think it? i think we have a if we make it as ascension by the time we make it ascension i think we have a good shot in, at winning ascension cuz 
we we obviously practice all the teams like who are you know playing the other challengers and other mm-hmm. regions. Even though I personally believe scrims don't matter at all. Like even if you like twenty four zero team in scrims, okay, maybe not twenty four zero. Maybe if you like beat a team in scrims. Like it doesn't mean getting a beat and then beat them in like a Efficient proper game. game. Yeah. So based off scrims, I think we can like not just us. I think even if Revenant make it or even if TR makes it to Ascension, I think. the sa team which is the team which is going to represent sa this time in ascension can win it mm. or it will at least like beat a lot of teams i personally believe that mm. that is good to know i mean i'm glad because if you guys because the competition level clearly has you know increased since last yeah. year there's no one single dominator like rnt also are getting you know uh, slacks a couple of maps and they are beatable it's not like they're not beatable So considering that I love the fact that you know competitions higher and you guys are a part of it but uh, before uh, you know we conclude this there's a lot of people right now who probably around the same age as you or younger than you or older than you who are watching you are you know probably looking at the fact that you know what maybe I also want to be a pro player so what would you tell them like you know what should they do to become a valorant professional player in India I think before you do any of that like have a good backup plan like don't like think about quitting your studies or like you know quitting college or anything cuz esports still in India is not established like properly properly like as a normal sport is right yeah so if you want but like if you're starting off I would highly recommend you to play ranked grind ranked get to radiant I'm not even kidding in the Indian scene getting to radiant teams will start looking at you like people think rank doesn't matter oh i'm immortal 3 but i do this in scrims and stuff get to radiant i'm telling you teams in sa even if you're radiant top 200 top 100 teams will look at you like they'll be like damn this guy has like the mechanical skill to like get to like top 200 top 100 cuz game sense can still be taught like a good coach can like establish like a play style he can tell yeah. you how to play but mechanical skill is something that only you can achieve So I would highly like rec- if not like grind the radiant get, make like a good oglist team with like good friends like if you think you guys are good but honestly the T2 scene right now is not that good anymore as it was like back then when my, when I was in Chilcot because mm-hmm. there aren't many like T2 tournaments happening so I would highly recommend everyone to grind rank try to get the radiant and I promise you teams will start looking at you once you get to like that radiant rank and stuff yeah yeah i agree i think a lot of people right now just you know consider rank to be uh, a cesspool of you know toxicity in mumbai i mean if you can't play in mumbai go ahead play singapore and it's even better there because i think the people who play in singapore have a lot higher uh, skill ceiling as well at least in my opinion i'm saying my exp my personal experience uh, playing on uh, you know um, of course not at bengkas level but uh, lower immortal mid level immortal i i know what it feels like to play on mumbai server and then ship to singapore and then get my behind whoop so i know what it's like but yeah if any you know the the point of this uh, was that i wanted to give people we wanted to give people you know a look through as to you know how an 18 year old prodigal talent like yourself you know has made it to this and is now getting shouts to the fact that he could be a franchise player in probably the next if not one year if the next two years like yeah. you know, the same way like you I'm did. not even eligible for franchising yet because I'm not 18 right now <laughs> exactly see so <laughs> he 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 most likely and we hopefully he will make it there and he will be a part of a you know a, lo- a, lo- a I was I want to say a lot more indian squad where maybe we have two maybe three indian players who could join venka there uh, you know and play for the long term but yeah uh, venka uh, before you do head off uh, to all the fans that you've got Uh, who would potentially be watching this what do you have to uh, say to them uh i just want to say thank you for all the support and the love i've been getting and i want you guys to like keep supporting me like this cuz i'm going to you know prove you right in every way i can so thank you for all the support and uh love you guys well guys that is venka of course and uh, thank you so much venka for being here thank you for having me it was a amazing time i had a great time here i'm glad you did and i'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to get inspired from you even though you're not eligible for franchise <laughs> but they will get inspired by you to get probably develop and even if this i think inspires one single player to come out and let's say you know not give up studies try to maintain a balance like venka does 
I'm pretty sure your parents or your friends, everybody is going to support you just like you yep. play football, just like you play cricket. Like this guy already, yeah. play, he's already done enough, man. He's already achieved, I think, quite a lot. Given that he's played football for India, now he's playing uh, Valorant at the highest level. I think at 17, yeah, I think I should end this podcast. I'm feeling a little like I'm <laughs> underachieved here. But yes, thank you so much, guys. I will see you the next time. Bye bye.